Hey, welcome back to Project Addiction. So today we've got more L400 stuff for you guys. And the problem comes in the form of a vibration around 70 to 80 kilometers an hour. So today we're gonna dig into it, see if we can find out what's going on. All right, so I've already got the vehicle up in the air. All four tires are off the ground. And actually we're going to be replacing the front tires anyway. They're fairly worn out. The rear ones are pretty much brand new. But this vibration doesn't actually feel like it's the tires. Now that's not to say that it isn't the tires, but it feels like a very high speed vibration. You can feel it at around 70 to 80 kilometers an hour and you can feel it through the whole vehicle. The steering wheel itself isn't shaking. So that tells me it's most likely not going to be our front tire balance. It doesn't make a difference whether you are on the brakes or off the brakes. So it's most likely not going to be a brake related issue. And if you put in a new and let it coast at 70 to 80 kilometers an hour, the vibration doesn't change even though the engine RPMs have dropped down to idle. So that tells me it's most likely not going to be in the engine either. So that leaves us basically with the driveline and the wheels. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go under there and we're going to just inspect the U-joints on the drive shaft, check the CVs and check all of our bushings as well just to make sure everything under there is tight. From there, we're going to pull the wheels off and we'll spin the vehicle up to about 70, 80 kilometers an hour with no wheels on the back and see if the vibration is still there. That's going to help us isolate where the vibration is coming from. Okay, so we're under the van and we're just gonna check the U-joints on the drive shaft. We've got our rear U-joint here and our front one. Now I know that my buddy has actually already changed this rear U-joint, it's brand new, but I did notice there's a little bit of play in it still. And uh, it's not a rotational play, it's actually side to side. So that tells me that our yoke has actually started to split apart a little bit. So we might have to deal with that. That could in itself be the vibration, but it's pretty minimal. We're still gonna go ahead and check everything over, but that's something that we're gonna have to keep in mind. Front all looks pretty tight, no play there. And we do have a little bit of uh, wear in the transmission bushings that really shouldn't be causing our issue. So that's about it for underneath. So we're gonna hop out and get the wheels off, spin this up, and then we can check our drive shaft again. So with the wheels off, I've just used two lug nuts to hold the brake rotors in place, and that way we don't have any movement in there, which is giving us a false vibration or an additional vibration on top of the one that we're already trying to find. So I'm just gonna start it up here and put it in gear, and we're gonna spin those rear wheels up to 80, even 100 kilometers an hour, and see if the vibration is still here. vibration still with no wheels on so the vibration is definitely in the drive line I suspect it's probably going to be that drive shaft unfortunately I can't spin it up to 100 and look at the drive shaft at the same time so I'm gonna have to wait until I got a second person here to hop in and then I can go underneath and see if I can see what's going on all right so my assistant has arrived and we somehow have to get her and that up there. <laughs> Hold up. Success! Okay, so I'm gonna have Susan spin this up to about 100 kilometers an hour, and we're gonna hop under there with a the stethoscope and see if we can find where the vibration's coming from. But before we go any further with this, I don't recommend doing this at home. If you only have jack stands you're trying to do it in your driveway or on the floor of your garage, jack stands aren't the most stable. Yes, I've got our jack stands in the back, but it is lifted up on a proper center jack in the front and it's on a four post lift. So it's very, very stable. It's very, very solid. If you don't have the equipment, I highly recommend just taking it to a shop, let them do it there on their four post. It's much safer that way. Okay, so we're back underneath again. I've got Susan in the cockpit. She's gonna fire it up, bring it up to hundred kilometers an hour, hold it there. And we're gonna obviously stay free of the drive shaft, but try and isolate exactly where this vibration is coming from. Okay, Sue, so go ahead, fire it up. Okay, 
we don't even have to actually spin it off. I'll see if I can show you this in the camera. The whole drive shaft is wobbling up and down. Spin it up. Well, that was fairly definitive. You can see the whole drive shaft jumping up and down, just even at idle. So the faster that this thing spins, the worse that vibration is gonna get. So we're gonna have to pull this drive shaft out and uh, I suspect I'm probably gonna have to actually send it in and have the whole drive shaft rebuilt and balanced because there's definitely something wrong with it. Okay, so I was about to take the drive shaft down to the drive shaft shop and have them throw it on their balancer, make sure everything was good. But I just noticed something and I think this is likely our problem. So you'll notice on this side of the yoke, we have a little bit of a lip here. If I spin it around, you'll notice this side is sitting completely flush. And kind of the same deal here. We've got a little bit of a lip and this side it's sitting flush. Now if we look closer, you'll notice that C-clip is seated all the way down. But this one here seems to be raised a wee bit. And it's even more notable here. So we can see that our clip is seated all the way in, but on this side, it's clearly sitting on top of the cup. So these cups haven't been pushed in far enough is the issue. So I'm gonna push these cups all the way in, get those clips seated, and I'm willing to bet that gets rid of our drive shaft vibration. I'm not sure how well that showed up on the video, but the cups actually moved in quite a bit and I was able to get the C-clips seated. So this joint is actually a lot tighter now than it was before. It was pretty floppy originally. That indicates we definitely had an issue going on there. So I'm just gonna throw this back in the van and we'll take it for a test drive and hopefully this has gotten rid of that vibration. Got the drive shaft back in. I'm gonna hop up top, we'll spin it up again and see if the vibration's gone away. We'll have to do something about that hard start later. Well, let's throw it in gear. Let's see what we got. Nice and smooth, so looks like we got it. So I guess all I got left to do is throw the wheels back on and pull this van out. If you enjoyed that, hit that like and subscribe. Otherwise, get out in the shop and do something. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.